Hi, welcome to my page. I'm Rob from Classic Car Living. Today you're gonna to meet Hank. Hank is a veteran TV reporter who's been in the business for many years. Hank and I used to work at the local NBC station here in Miami, and that's where we realized that we both love classic cars. I recently met up with Hank at a car show so he can tell me a little bit about his car and the history behind it. As Hank would say in the news business, let's take a look. I'm Hank Tester and I own this 1957 PV444 Volvo. This is the same model and year that I drove in college. Not the same car, but yes it is. And when I get into this car, I am 21 years old again. So tell us a little bit about uh, the history of your dad and the Volvo you were telling me. Okay, my dad was a car guy and um, he could, he could fix anything. He was one of those kind of guys that, you know, look under the hood and, oh yeah, we'll adjust the spark or whatever. So Volvo came out and there was a dealership in my hometown of Yuma, Arizona, which was a small town. And the dealer really didn't know what the heck he had. And he called my dad up because he knew my dad knew foreign sports cars. And he, my dad knew how to tune SU carburetors. These, they're SU carburetors in, in this vehicle. And so my dad, hi Jenny, how you doing? My dad, um, she, he, he was asked to come up and show the mechanics how to adjust the SU carburetors. My father being my father says, oh, by the way, uh, can we make a deal on uh, the, this vehicle? Legend has it, it was the first one imported into Arizona. Don't know if that's a fact or not, but hey, it's a family legend and I like it. Uh, but he, he drove it, and great car, and then he gave it to me to go to college. And I drove this year, this model, through college, uh, and in the summertime, uh, following the cantaloupes, which is a big deal in Arizona, um, I drove this, we would go, and I worked in cantaloupe sheds. And I drove this car across the Mojave Desert in July twice from Yuma to Bakersfield to Tehachapi, into Bakersfield, up to Fresno. Hotter than hell. Still have in the back, well, I, when I bought this car, to make it more authentic, uh, and you'll notice it has some Arizona stuff on it from my college and so on, but I found an old original cantaloupe crate, and that's what you would keep all your stuff in and put it in the back of the trunk. How did you find this car? This car, all right, so, I, I sold it when I got, you know, because, hey, it was a college car you drove. And I bought an Austin Healey, of course. That's what you do. Um, and so, you know, through the years, marriage and so on and so forth, and various and sundry Volvos we, we bought. Um, but this thing showed up on Bring a Trailer in Wisconsin. And it was before Bring a Trailer really got really, really big time, and they would list... Uh, interesting cars on Craigslist that they would run across. And I called up, I saw this and I told my wife, I says, this is the best car I ever owned. And she said, love her, buy it. Well, <laughs> when you get that kind of permission, you do. And we bought it and uh, was brought down here, unloaded it off the truck, I got in it and swear to God, I was like being back in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I drove this car a lot. It just brought back the memories. Uh, smell of the car, every, every, everything, the sound. Uh, I even put my hand up on the steering wheel like I normally did, and I could tap the, the windshield with my nervous habit. And there it was, you know, back again. So, How, how is that feeling, to, to, to be able to find something that brings you back like that? You know, it, bring, it was great, and it, it brings back a, a ton of really great memories. I mean, I went to school in Flagstaff, Arizona. I was a rock and roll DJ. I managed rock and roll bands. I was president of Sigma Nu, played varsity baseball, and had a Volvo. Uh, you know, what more do you want? Yeah, how, how was the condition of the car when you purchased it? This one here? Yes. Um, it had some dents. Um, it, 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 Tires weren't that great. The interior was totally ratted. Um, and so I, I made the decision, I had restored a Carmen Ghia totally to show car perfection. 
not going to do that again ever. Uh, but it was a great experience, and the car turned out wonderful. But we decided we would just preserve this car, make sure the paint is good. There were some repainting issues. Uh, we had to do new tires and some tuning on the on the engine. Uh, no, nothing major. Uh, and uh, the interior, what, what was very interesting in that interior is really the least of your worries because uh, it can be done. And, and, but this was interesting because I remembered it the way you know, I wanted it, the way I remembered it. And what we found out was that Volvo on their export models had different uh, uh, upholstery schemes than they did their, their domestic. You can buy a domestic uh, upholstery kit for this car right now in, in, in Sweden, but it's not the kind of tuck and roll that I remembered. So we went and bought a bunch of brochures from the year and looked at them. And then from my memory, sat down with a, uh, a poster, car upholster. Um, I think he was from the Dominican Republic. No habla inglés. And so I got my wife. And she translated, and we, we figured out what we would do. The beauty is that some years later, uh, we had it on in this show, and four guys from Sweden came by, and they, their parents had worked in the, uh, in the factory, which produced these cars. I said, dude, how's the, inter you know, how's, how's the interior looking? Oh, it's wonderful. It's perfect, just like it was. Well, I know it isn't, but fool them. So that's great. Yeah, that was that was the, I think the most fun part of this car was the interior, getting it back together. You like it? We are from Sweden. Ah, <laughs> you know. I drive Volvo, Volvo Amazon. How 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 close is it? Is it looking is it looking pretty good? Yeah, it's very fine. The 18 engine. There's the SU carburetors that we uh, talked about. Um, there's the Volvo red block. Uh, not much has been done. We, we think this is the original engine. We don't think it's been pulled. The previous guy was a, that, that owned it was kind of a shade tree mechanic. And so he, he, this is home built. Uh, and the shield over there, that is non-standard. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you, when I saw that, I went, oh, God. And then I went, wait a minute. These cars would tend to vapor lock. This helps prevent vapor lock. Talk to me about that dash. Oh, the dash is straight out of Art Deco, 19, you know, 1930s European. And uh, yeah, it's got the chrome uh, and, and, and just just that stuff that that was of the period of the artwork and kind of fits in here to this, this Art Deco uh, feeling here. Professional photographers and art students come and take close up pictures of uh, the Volvo insignia, the hubcaps, uh, all of that because of the design. And then the, then the design of the car. I mean, it, it's, it's a 1940 Ford in the back and very European in the front. The other interesting thing is, and I did not know this, but because this is more international here at this car show, you get an interesting crowd. Chileans, Argentines, and some Brazilians come up and say, we remember these cars. And I go, God, South America, what's the deal? This is a snow car. Argentina and uh, Chile are mountainous countries with snow and Volvo exported there. That's awesome. So if you enjoyed this story, please subscribe, like, and comment. It really helps my page to grow. Thank you so much for your support. Till the next video.